This factory is in Effort of Pennsylvania, which is just outside of Lancaster and three states away from our job site. And this is where our concrete foundation walls are going to be formed up, poured, insulated, and fitted with studs. Doug, good to see you. Good to meet you. So you are Director of Operations, correct? That's correct, yes. So when someone asks you why use a precast concrete wall, what are you telling them? I tell them we have the ability to take your blueprints and do a custom design exactly as you like. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to pour it inside a quality controlled environment where we control the weather. We don't have the circumstances that affect the quality on site. We don't have all the uh, trucks that are sitting and waiting. So we can build everything perfect to spec every time. And how long to install? Usually less than one day. Wow, install in a single day. That's correct. So you're giving us speed and quality. That's right. All right, well, how about giving us a tour? Let's go. Here in our production facility, we're going to build about five or six foundations a day. We have wow. 60 total employees. Each foundation takes about three hours to build. So we'll run shifts for about 16 hours and be building all day long. Yeah. One of the insulation parts that we use is EPS. It's an expanded polystyrene. It comes yeah. in these large billets. This is the kind of styrofoam cup material, right? Exactly, same thing. What we're doing here is cutting stud insulation. The entire profile is programmed on the CNC machine and we apply an electric charge to the wires and it goes through and melts everything and cuts it to the exact specification. Like a hot knife through butter, right? That's exactly right. Every material that we use that is EPS will be cut on this machine, um, using up all the waste for the most part. The tiny little bit that we do have will be ground up, sent back to the manufacturer and they'll use it again. Cool. Here's a piece of stud insulation that was just cut on the CNC. So the concrete goes into the cavity here, and then you've got the insulation here on the outbound side? That's correct. Ryan's going to take a piece of galvanized lath, and he's going to bend tabs up so that the insulation can sit down on top of that. Yep. Holds it in place, and it also carries the rebar that's going to go in the stud. Right here is where we're going to start with your foundation. This is our form? This is your form. Right now, we're spraying the form down with a lightweight form oil. This will keep the concrete from sticking when we're ready to strip the walls. So we're bringing a window frame in here. This is treated two by eight framing. We're gonna set it on the deck, square it up, and we'll nail it down in place so it doesn't move during the process. Windows made to the exact specifications of the customer. Header will be set to the depth that they want. Right now they're dropping in the studs that we saw produced earlier. They're gonna be spaced two foot on center. We're going to put header and footer insulation at the top and bottom, which will provide the two foot spacing. We're putting number three rebar in the header and the footer. There will be two pieces in each, and then number four bar will be vertical in each stud. So now that the studs are in, the rebar's in, what we're going to start doing is putting down the insulation. Yeah. Everything that we've done so far is, is kind of an opposite of what you're used to seeing from the inside of the foundation. So we're going to put this piece of insulation in first. It's polyiso. It's going to give us R6.5 per inch. And it's foil faced? Foil faced for, for fire reason? and smoke uh, oh, yeah. prevention. Next, we'll have four and a half inches of EPS. This gives it a combined uh, R value of 21.3. Wow, that is a nicely insulated wall. So this is where we're gonna mix our concrete. We're gonna mix a 5,000 PSI concrete. We have 100% control over the mix because we're in a climate controlled environment. So if you guys are 5,000 PSI, what is it typically on a job site poured on site? Sure, typically on a job site, you're gonna see anywhere from 25 to 3,500 PSI. And the reason for that is they just, they can't control the conditions. You may have five or six trucks out there. You're sitting, you're waiting to pour, you're adding water and things like that. It just doesn't have the control. What does the 5,000 get us? 5,000 allows us to guarantee these walls to be watertight. Nice. So we're pouring the concrete right now. What we have is we have a one and three quarter inch face shell, and then we have a full depth stud cavity. So we actually have a nine and a half inches of solid concrete at each stud. But that skin is just gonna be your inch and three quarters, so that's not a lot of concrete. I mean, how much does that compare to a traditional pour? We're gonna use about a third of the concrete as a traditional poured wall. Wow, that is remarkable. And so you can see the depth of the stud there. So that whole thing gets filled up with concrete. Mm -hmm. And then this right here is just your inch and three quarters. That's exactly right. And of course, the header and the footer is full depth concrete, and the load will transfer through the stud into the soil. All right. 
So this wall has been poured, it's sat overnight. We've stripped it and it is ready to be uh, hooked up and loaded onto a trailer. Well, your oil work, that thing just slipped right out of there, no problem at all. It's coming out the way it's supposed to. All right. And that's weighing in at about what do you think? That particular panel is probably 3,500 to 4,000 pounds. Yep. And we'll get it on the trailer and send the walls up to Jamestown. Awesome. Love to see it. Thank you, Doug. I'll see you there. Hey, Kevin. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So uh, Jeff has gotten the hole most of the way there. What are you guys doing to finish it off? Uh, what we do now is we'll locate the corner pins of uh, the foundation and they'll lay out the string line. Yep. Once the string line is uh, set, they'll come in here and they'll start screeding and compacting the stone. So this is you guys trying to get it to just the perfect height here. That's correct. So that when uh, the walls are finished, everything's square level at the top. All right, let's get to it. All right, great. And now that the first panel is placed in, the next thing we're doing now is placing the ceiling. So you're running a bead right down the corner there? Yes, it's a uh, waterproof sealant. So this is a urethane-based sealant. I know it's also pretty strong. Yes, it is. It does have adhesive strength, and it definitely is for uh, waterproofing the wall. So how many beads are you going to run in that corner? I'll be going three beads. The first one is called the connector bead. Yeah. And that's really the, the main bead that prevents the water from coming through. Right. And then he'll place an interior and exterior bead once the other panel is placed. I see. Nice. And the panels then are placed together and bolted with a half inch uh, bolt. Oh yeah. Right. You only bolt it in two, two places. That's correct. At the bottom of the wall and at the top. Great. Nice. And that panel ready to come in? Uh, yes it is. All so right. we need to get out of the way. Okay. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.